The shooting took place on September 30th around 7.45 p.m. at the Sangamon County Juvenile Detention Center as an armed individual who had taken a female hostage was attempting to escape the secured facility. Additionally, the same individual had fired at multiple victims inside the center just prior to officer's arrival. This is, this is um, Sangamon County Juvenile Center. Um, oh my goodness. What's going we on? have a kid that has a gun and he's shooting inside of the, he has a, oh my God, we need somebody here now, please. He's inside shooting? Yes, he's inside. Somehow he's got a gun. He has a he's hostage? Left. He has a hostage with him. Where did you last see him at? He, he, he's out of control room. He has a gun. He's holding. He was holding. Did he shoot me once? Uh, I think he did. Yes. You yes, think he did? Please. Who's he holding he's a hostage? At one of the other residents, a female, and he just shot through the window at me. He needs. We okay, need so he's holding a here. he's holding a female he's resident got, hostage. He's got, a, he's got a female resident hostage. He just blew a window right next to me when I was trying to get into another room with another resident. We need as many units as you got. Okay. Two sixteen, two seventeen, two oh one, two oh two, and you can start callers in the control room, twenty two oh one South Dirksen. Have a juvenile inside the business shooting. Several shots fired, twenty two oh one South Dirksen. Attention all units. Sangman County's en route to an active shooter, twenty two oh one South Dirksen, the juvenile center. Multiple officers from the Springfield Police Department and surrounding agencies responded to this initial call for service. The first arriving squad car was occupied with a veteran SPD officer and a recruit in training. Here you will observe their actions upon arrival to this rapidly evolving scene. What you see, what you see. The veteran officer immediately retrieves his department issued rifle from the trunk area as the officer in training takes up a position just behind him. The two quickly developed a plan of action and began to approach the front entry doors of the facility when they observed the front door swing wide open. The veteran officer observed the suspect armed with a handgun and the hostage. Please keep in mind this portion of the video is difficult to watch. As you will witness, even though the suspect has been shot and the weapon dislodged from his hand, he still attempts to regain control of it, at which time the officer fires another round. The officer recognizes the suspect has now raised his hands in the air, at which time he requests immediate and medical attention. Also at this time, the hostage is taken away to safety by the officer in training. As other officers arrive on scene, they begin to provide life-saving medical care by applying tourniquets to the now injured suspect until medical professionals arrive. The suspect was rushed to a nearby Level 1 Trauma Center, HSHS St. John's Hospital, where he would succumb to his injuries. The hostage received superficial injuries from shrapnel, and she was treated and released from a local hospital. While the death is tragic, the instantaneous organized response, which was carried out exactly how the officers were trained, clearly prevented additional loss of life. Officers recovered a Garson 9mm handgun from the foyer area that the suspect had in his possession throughout the entire incident. <laughs> 